glasses. Actually, no, I can keep them on so I can see the slides. <laughs> All right. How are we doing? All right. I'm ready. I'm ready. I, okay. I was thinking about what makes people successful, same as everybody else here thinks about all day long, right? I mean, to be, to be happy, to have fulfillment, to have purpose, you know, I mean, what does it actually take? Because I want to know, don't you? Yeah. And by that, I don't mean, let's be millionaire, let's win the lottery, let's be born rich, let's have a trust fund, because that's just outside thing. I'm talking about like success that kind of comes from within, you know what I'm saying? like real stuff. And the thrill of the media is they keep giving us these kind of rock star celebrity, larger than life assholes to emulate. <laughs> and, you know, celebrity artists, celebrity uh, billionaires, celebrity spiritual leaders, celebrity, celebrity, celebrity. And actually, when you think about it, most people we know who are successful are actually kind of normal, kind of dull. They just happen to be like insanely rich and happy. <laughs> just dull. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking maybe we need a, a new definition of success that doesn't require us selling our souls out to Wall Street or Hollywood or this other fucking silliness. You know, I think, I think we have to think. So how does that actually happen? How do we actually get into the zone where we don't have to be these douchebags? Anyways, so I saw this movie called Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Everybody else seen that? This movie about a 75-year-old master sushi guy, the top sushi chef in the world, who's has three Michelin stars, the only one. Does he have a really exp uh, expansive fleet of restaurants? No. He has one restaurant underground in the subway, 10 seats, stools. You sit down, you eat sushi, that's what you do. In a subway in Tokyo, that's what you do. He works 350 days a year. He turns up, you eat sushi. That's all you eat. He doesn't serve salad. He doesn't serve starters. He doesn't serve dessert. He doesn't have appetizers. He doesn't have sliders. You eat sushi. That's what you eat <laughs> every day. And even though that's all he serves you, people will wait up to a year in advance to be able to eat there in the subway station. OK? I pay $1,000 a head to eat in the subway station. Anyways, a couple of years ago, I was working with Savile Row, the famous tailors. They make the best suits in the world, $5,000 a pop. They're from England. They're famous. And they have a very similar uh, model to, uh, that they work with. Now, even though they're, they don't have large overheads and large businesses, and they're not billionaires, the great and the good, they're Sean Connery, beat a path to their door. They have a, a year-long waiting list as well. And even though they're not rich or famous, they're, they just sit and they just do their thing day in, day out, day in, day out, sewing buttons, cutting cloth, sewing buttons, cutting cloth, sewing buttons, cutting cloth. That's what they, okay, sorry. That's what they do. And it's, and from what I've seen from my, from my Taylor friends and my Wall Street broker douchebag friends, um, they have 10 times the amount of personal satisfaction. They really do. They have this kind of weird, calm serenity about them that, you know, they don't, nobody else has. And, I, and I've kind of always wanted to kind of emulate their shtick. I want, I want what they got. What the hell do they have, you know? And so I've, for the last couple of years, I've been trying to like be more like them and less like my douchebag friends. And that's why as a, I'm a cartoonist now. And that's what I do. I, I go to my little workbench and I, I draw all day, and that's what I do. And it's really boring, I'm sorry, but I, I love doing it. So it's boring, but I love doing it, okay? But what is our secret? What is this thing that we have to ha get to have what they have? I mean, what's the secret sauce? Because we're all floundering around, most of us, and we're not like them. The trick is mastery. They have mastered something. They have found something simple and useful that people value, and they get up every day, and they master it. They're not jack of all trades. They're not social media butterflies. No, they're masters. And I believe that mastery is far more satisfying than money. And I've done both. <laughs> and I think, I think mastery is what we should all strive for, not success. And the thing about mastery, is this portal, you can take it away, 
wherever you go. You can emigrate. No Wall Street an analyst can take it away from you. No asshole boss can take it away from you. It's with you. And that's what we should all emulate to have. We should all master something. And that's what I think is a good success model for the future. And I think we should not be afraid to use that word, mastery. It is not elitist. It's a word that matters. And that's my two cents. Thanks for listening.